So in this chapter, we'll be taking a look at how we can define and register components. And then we'll also see how we can do the component binding. So let's first of all, see how we can create a component. Over here, we have a simple HTML page, which is a sign up page. And here we have the first name, last name, and then full name being shown, email, password, the usual stuff. And we have included our jQuery library, knockout version 3.3 library, and then we have the application.js file. Now in this application.js file, all we have done is we have created this view model, which is having the first name, last name, email, password, full name. And uh, full name is just returning the concatenation of first name and last name. So if I run this one in browser, we'll get this form. And if I enter something over here, you can see the full name being returned over here and similarly i can provide an email id over here and then password so now let's say we have to create this form as a component we'll say it as a user sign up component so what are the steps required to do that in knockout js a component can contain a view model and template both or just a template in this version we'll be having both the view model as well as the template so first let's create a very basic version of our component so we'll head over to script app.js and let's comment this one for now. We'll see how we can make use of this while creating our component. So the first thing that we need to do is to create a component, we need to first of all give it a name and we do that by registering it. So we'll say ko.components.register and then we need to provide the name for this. So we'll say user sign up as the name and after that we need to provide the view model and the template there can be components which just have the template but in this version we'll be having both template and view model so here we'll have the template and we'll have the view model okay so this is the basic structure of our component now the view model will contain the model that we have just now defined on top and the values that this view model will get will be coming from the parameter attribute so we can define this as a function so we'll say view model and then here we'll have it as a function notice the params parameter that we have passed in this function and based on that params we are having the first name last name email and then the full name is getting computed we'll be covering params shortly now we have defined the view model and if you notice everything is exactly the same as we have in our user signup model earlier the only difference being the params parameter that we are passing now coming on to template very easy way of creating a template is putting all this that is there inside this template as a simple plain string so let's do that there you go we have the template now in place and the view model in place so the next step that we need to do is we have registered our component it is now having the view model and the template so i'll just remove this template from here or for time being let's comment it out so we have our component ready now the next step is earlier we were binding this to this view model user sign up now there's no view model available as such so what we'll do is we'll simply remove this from here save this file and now we need to do component binding now there are two ways of doing it one is by making use of regular html elements and the other one is by making use of custom elements so first of all let's see how we can create our component using usual html elements so here we'll say div and let's say inside this div we'll be showing the template so in this div we need to pass the data bind attribute and data bind will be equal to component and this component will include two things first name name will be the name of the component that we have defined over here so it will be user sign up inside double quotes we'll have this and then we'll have params params is what we have defined in our view model as function parameter so we'll have params and this params will then pass the view model values so first name last name email password full name we'll be passing it over here in this way so here you can see that we are making use of the usual html div element and we are making use of the data bind attribute where we are saying the component is user sign up and these are the parameters which we need to pass now if i run this one in browser you'll notice that the first name by default is coming as core because that is what we have passed in our parameter if i change it to first name and refresh this you'll notice that 
first name is being populated in the text box. So this way we can make use of HTML elements to render our components. The other way of binding our component is by making use of custom elements and custom elements is pretty easy. All we need to do is the tag will be the user sign up. So if I have to say I need to create a component then I'll say okay fine user sign up is the name of the component and then all we need to do is pass parameters in this as well and the way we need to pass parameters will look something like this so if I comment this one now the normal HTML version then we have this user sign up before doing this let's take a look at the code that's generated when we made use of the HTML element div so here you can see that the top level element is this div and inside that we are getting the field set option okay now let's go ahead and make use of the user sign up so we have commented this let's refresh the page now till you're getting the same result but now we are making use of custom elements so now if I see the page view of it you will notice that user sign up is coming as the top level element now there's one more way of binding our component and that is without the use of top level element and that we can do by making use of the syntax so instead of the usual div let's comment this one as well user sign up so instead of the usual div that we had if we don't have any component as such top level component we can simply make use of key component and then specify the name of the component that is user sign up and then the parameters that we are passing and if I run this one, you still should see the result. You can see that user sign up is coming up. And if I take you to the code view, you'll notice that it's coming up without any top level element. So these are the ways using which you can bind your component. Now, there are other ways of specifying our template and view model. Some are a bit complex and some are pretty easy. So we'll be covering the easier one initially and then we'll move forward to the advanced version, I can say. Now, we have seen that we can specify the template inside the component itself, but this doesn't look good at all. So there must be a way where we can, you know, take this HTML out and then make use of it by some variable name and to do that let's take this html out from here so in order to specify a template the easiest way is in your index.html you can define a template with an id attribute which will look something like this so here you can see i'm saying template id as sign up template and this is the same field set which i just now extracted from here and now i need to pass this sign up template to our component and to do that all i need to do is say element and then sign up template so here let's make some changes so that you can understand that it's coming from here only sign up user sign up component i'll say knockout user sign up component okay now let's refresh this page now and there you go it's coming from there only and and rest of the things are pretty simple so here we are making use of this version as of now that's why core and last name and email is being populated so this way you can call your template from external file so this was the easier way which i was talking about there are other ways as well which are a bit advanced so that will be covering in the upcoming lecture so initially we have two ways of specifying the template one being by defining it inside a template element and then accessing it by its id the other was specifying it inline in our component itself now let's see how we can define our view model so one way of defining our view model was specifying it as a function here itself. The other way is giving this function a particular name. So let's copy it here and say it as user sign up and then make use of this function over here as user sign up. So that's one way of accessing your view model. So let's run this now in browser and see how it works. Okay, so here there was an extra curly brace let's remove that and now run this in browser so you can see that the same function is the same component is rendered now but we have defined our view model in a different way now let's see is there any other way of defining the view model seems like there's one more way and that way we'll basically make use of instance of our function so here we'll have our function defined in this fashion first comment this one so let's say we have our view model in this way notice we are not passing any params over here so here we need to specify it in this fashion we'll say instance colon and then the name of the model that we had 
close it over here now when we are making use of this instance the parameters cannot be passed so here while binding our component we will be taking this out from here even if we leave it here it's not going to affect because the parameters are not being passed at all so just leave this here and now let's run this in browser here you'll notice that the first name is coming because that is what we are having in our app here so if i change it here that's what is going to be populated here you can notice that value coming up and if i change the last name everything works still the same way it's just the other way of implementing it so in this tutorial we saw how we can create a component how we can have our templates defined and included how we can include our view model we also saw how to bind our components by making use of proper html elements by making use of custom elements and rendering our components by binding them without any top level elements in the upcoming lectures we'll see how we can do automatic module detection in knockout.js for that we'll be studying a bit about required.js library as well so stay tuned for that in the next lecture